it's such an honor to Sister Cheryl Hopewell, the president, and to the officers and members of the lay, to our presiding elder heart. It's a humble experience for me to be here. Those of you who have known me all of my life, starting as a mother sunbeam, <laughs> and going throughout the years, as I look around the room, I see those who have dropped nuggets in my life. And I stand on your shoulders. I do not take it for granted that I got here by myself. Amen. And to be here is a humble friend to Sister Wanda, who is really older than me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just thank God for the friendship, and I thank God for just the laughter. And I have to thank Sister Cheryl Hopewell, uh, Reverend Maxine Johnson, and uh, Sister uh, Kyla for keeping me in shape. <laughs> uh, I thank them for the spiritual run that I may go, and I always pray for them on their physical run. I, I want to let you know that because I am with my sister Cheryl and others, we are running up to five miles or more. Oh yeah, so, uh, it, yeah, we. So in other words, uh, in other words, thanks to my nieces and nephews who keep me with Facebook, whenever our Sister Cheryl or Reverend Maxine or Sister Tyler run, I always text them and say, I'm running with you and thank you for keeping me in shape. Uh, I just have to told, tell Cheryl that one time she ran around 8 o'clock at night and when I saw her, I said, Cheryl, I don't stay up that late, so could you run a little early? <laughs> But God is good, and I thank you. There's a word from the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father God, we thank you. God, hide me behind the cross. Let them see you and not me. But let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In a brief meditation for this morning, a familiar passage and one that many may use when you're talking about Christmas, is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that means whosoever, believeth to him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. And if you were to look at the Luke, the first chapter, verse 19, to bring it somewhat together, it says, the angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. In other words, we got good news coming in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And then if you go with me to John the 12th chapter, in the 46th verse, it says, I have come into the world as light, so that no one, remember whosoever will, now is no one, who believes in me, shall stay in darkness. There's good news that we won't be in darkness for a few minutes. I, I want to talk about a gift worth waiting for. Amen. A, a gift worth waiting for. Christmas is that blessed time of the year when nearly everyone's thought turned to gifts and giving. Giving, you know, is a Christian virtue not to be taken lightly. But the older I get, the more I realize that every gift I get I don't take it lightly. Every Amen. gift I give, I don't take it lightly. Amen. You know, some of the gifts that you, we give or receive, some of them are not a surprise. Mm -hmm. Some of them are no thought put into it. You, you go through Walmart and whatever's on the shelf, whatever's under $5, you get. <laughs> when you want to give someone a gift, you, start, you should start thinking about it ahead of time. Hopefully you try to find out what the person wants or needs. Don't take it personal when people give you a list. It is trying to be specific so you won't waste your money on things that they really don't want or need. Uh, another thing about a gift, you don't know what it is until you get it. Another thing, it does, it does not do what the picture or the instructions say. Some of us get gifts and we read the instructions, look at the box and we open it and try to use it and it says, wait a minute, something's wrong with the gift. It's not doing what the picture says it should do. 
Another thing about a gift, it doesn't last long. It, it becomes obsolete. Remember, some of the things you got last year, you only used it one time, and you're not using it no more because guess what? They got a new improved model. In other words, if you got an iPhone 5 last year, they got 6 and 9 on the way. Hello, somebody. Another thing about a gift that you receive, you can't determine the value. That's why they scrape off, mark off the cost of it. Another thing about a gift, it should not be regifted. gift hello somebody, unless the person is in another state or another country. But what is a gift? A gift or a present is an item given to someone without the expectation of payment. A gift is meant to be free. By extension, the term gift can refer to anything that makes the other happy. In other words, when I get a gift, I should be happy about it. Amen. Whether it's big or small, I should look at the size of the package. I should be excited because of the gift. Yeah. But what is the reason for giving a purpose? It's an expression of love yeah. and friendship. It's an expression of gratitude for a gift received. It is to share wealth and offer some time travel when you go I never, uh, on my refrigerator, I got so many magnets of every place. That's like, with Sister Cheryl, I may not run, but I know where she runs at. So when you go travel, I got, I may not go with you, but I got Cancun on my refrigerator. <laughs> oh, somebody. It says give, a, a give, give any a, a occasion, when to give, anytime. We should not wait till Christmas time to give. Amen. We always say the cliche, dead noses smell no roses. Why are you going to wait till their birthday? Why are you going to wait even till Christmas? If there's a, a something that you want to give somebody out of love, just give it up just because give. We, because if a need exists, we should always give a gift. Amen. You don't need no public display of giving it. Just give it. Don't you know when you give a public display, sometimes you take the essence and the meaning of the gift. Yeah. Amen. It's, it's, it's not for your glory. It's for God's glory before they're good. But what about the presentation of the gift? Gifts are often wrapped in wrapping paper and accompanied by a gift note which may note the occasion. Another thing about uh, the presentation, the recipient name and the giver name may be stated. And sometimes you don't have to put no name on it. Just give it. Amen. But when we look at God's gift, hello somebody, a gift worth waiting for, we must understand a couple of things. It was given out of love. For God so loved the world, amen, that I'm in the world, but not of the world, so God loves me. It was needed, it was given to save us from our sin. I'm talking about salvation. We talked about darkness. But with God, there is light. 24-7, 365 days of the year. If you allow God in your heart, in your life, the light will ever shine. For Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. Another thing is, is free. It costs us nothing. But Jesus, it costs him everything. Here's something. All we got to do is accept Christ as our Savior. It's free. But look at Jesus. How many of us would go a mile right now for a friend? If they were to call you right now in this meeting and say they need help, are you going to be concerned about the luncheon or are you going to go and hello somebody? Go and help them. I, I read that a gift that God gives was, it was unsolicited. We did not ask for it, but while we are yet sinners, he died for us. We didn't ask for it, but God loved us enough that he gave it anyhow. Yeah. I like the anyhow the but God moment. Yeah. When I think I don't need him, he's always there. When I, when I think that he's forgotten me, God just wiped my brow and said, I've been there yeah. with you all. Yeah. Oh, you understand. Hello, somebody. Another thing about a gift, it, it was undeserving. It was grace and mercy. We're standing right here because of grace and mercy. We didn't deserve it. We're not getting what we really do deserve. But I thank God for grace and mercy. That was the thing that woke me up this morning and told him, like, you may take it for granted, but to the folk that got up not clothed in their right mind. And in the activity of our limbs, I don't know about you, I didn't need no Advil this morning. Hello, somebody. So when I think of his goodness, I got up with joy because of another day's journey. And I'm so glad. Another thing about the, this gift, it's unchanging. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Christmas gifts we receive year long. Some even last a year, but already some don't even work now. 
Even the one you just bought, get ready to give somebody next week, you know it don't work. Tell <laughs> somebody. It's, un it's, it's unlimited. The gift. When I raise it's unlimited. Whosoever. Whosoever. I'm the whosoever. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. God's gift came to us in the simplest and humblest, humblest of rappings. He wasn't born in chalk. That's children, that's hospital over there, y'all. He wasn't born in temple or a palace of gold. They were so he was born in a stable. He didn't have clothes from baby or us, nor a purple robe. His clothes was rags. He didn't have a, a, a bassinet all dolled up. He, he was laid in a feeding area. And guess what? When I look at the Apostle Creed, he was born on the verge of Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate in the first day. He was crucified, dead, and buried. But here's the good news. On the third day, he got up with all power. And he said, he got good news. Another thing, he didn't go to Harvard or Yale or Princeton. He didn't drive a Lexus, a Cadillac, a Range Rover, or a BMW. And yet he healed without medicine. And had theologians stunned with his wisdom and knowledge. Another thing about God's gift, there was more to the gift than meets the eye. We got the sun and we got eternal life. It was a package deal when you get the sun in his word. You get eternal life. I don't know about you. Some of y'all only get gift one without the batteries. Hello, somebody. But one thing about God's gift, He gives you the gift and the batteries to keep it running. Running and running. When God decided to give us the gift, it wasn't something that He just thought on the fly. Long before there was a town called Bethlehem, there was a garden called Eden. And a plant called a planet called Earth. A decision was made in eternity that God will send forth his son, born of a woman, made under the law to redeem those that were under the law. The Bible says that he was slain from the foundation of the world. Make no mistake about it. This gift that God has given us was the most sacrificial thing he possibly could have offered us. I don't know about you this morning. I'm going to wait for my gift. I'm excited about receiving it. I, I don't deserve it. He gave it to me anyhow. He yeah. thought that I was worth saving. He thought that I was worth giving the gift. I know the giver, for he kept his promise before. I can depend on that what I will receive is for my good or for his glory. I realize that when he gives it, with, to me, he had me in mind. He knows my every needs even before I ask it. I don't mind waiting for that gift. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run up for me. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The gift is my hope, my joy, my provider, my healer. I realize that the longer I keep Jesus around, the better I get. it all we get to it because when I look back at my past and I take inventory of my now and I see my future I began to start thanking God in advance so if you don't get anything next week from from me or from you it's all right for he who gets the son gets the gift of eternal life it's a gift for people so don't worry about what they don't give look back God has brought you for so God, I thank you for today. I thank you for what I have. You worried about getting this? Are you excited about what you got now? Or are you worried about tomorrow? That tomorrow will take care of itself. Because I don't know about you. I'm going to start thanking God in advance. The gift that God gave to me a long time ago. It gets better and better. Because every day with Jesus, it's sweeter.